Hi, welcome. Welcome to the Hot Flash, the monthly leadership tip for women in leadership, successful women like you. I'm Carol. And I'm Katie. And Are you sure you you're not Carl today <laughs> instead of Carol? I sound like Carl. I sound like a frog. And uh, I just want you all to know that I'm taking one for the team. Katie and I, uh, probably a year ago, came up with what we were going to talk about you know, on a monthly basis. And November's topic is... Appropriately... Being sick and tired. <laughs> Being sick and tired. And as you can tell, I have, uh, I've actually had laryngitis for the last 10 days. You are really this sick is, of it. I know. This is, and this is the best I've sounded. I am sick and tired. <laughs> this, this is my mom. I am sick and tired of you kids are driving me crazy. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Oh, at work, yeah. are you sick and tired? Yeah. I think women across the country are suffering. I know we are from being really worn out, overcommitted, and worn down. That's we true. want to share with successful women this month how to manage yourself just a little bit more when you're going through those phases of being sick and tired. And it does happen. I mean, we have ups and downs, but when we have the downs, you know, there are there are things that you can do to get yourself back in balance. And Without think, medication. <laughs> sometimes it takes medication. In my case, I'm on my it's second so my second round of antibiotics. But um, but I I'm I'm on the mend and my voice is actually working. So I think there's a few things for women to look at when you're looking at becoming sick and tired. First of all, the recognition of you know what? I've worn myself down. Yeah. I'm likely to compromise. Well, here's the most important thing. You're you're compromising your productivity because you've worn yourself down. So how do you get yourself back on track? Edie Greenblatt has a list of four areas of, of maintaining balance for keeping that um, that health back in healthy area of you right, know, really right. focusing on, on how we want to be more productive in four in four. Um, very distinct ways. And these ways, are they're so obvious, but if you're not paying attention to each of the four, so we want to share what those four are with you. Okay. Okay. Um, the first one is physical. And uh, as you can tell, physically, I let myself get worn down. And then I think, you know, again, like you say, when you are physically worn down, you really do need to take care of yourself. So did you stay up mm -hmm. late several nights in a row to get worn down, Carol? <laughs> Weren't you on a trip? I was on a trip. Where you didn't get an adequate amount of bit sleep. <laughs> much. Do I sound like her mother right now? Yes, you do, and and I do believe that's where but it came from. Fun. But I was also working very hard, and um, so my productivity has been decreased right since because then. of that. It, the other thing is, is I'm really trying mm. to pay attention to my my physical and take the time I need, sleep when I need. Etc. And and not overdo it anymore. How many of you at at home watching on TV? How <laughs> many of you would say that you have a very clear understanding of what your endurance and your capability is? And you know it varies because the other three factors that we'll talk about here in just a minute all take play in at the same time. But the physical aspect of wearing yourself down it starts to catch up with you, and then it's gonna it's gonna affect each of the others, which is you know the cognitive and the mental and and emotional everything else that 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 starts to go with it. So you don't want the physical aspect of your life to be the trigger of what's making you sick, right? And tired. <laughs> okay, so that's the first one. Okay. Tell so us the physical, second one. Psychological. Um, could you be, you know... Psycho. Psycho. Um, I've actually thought about this illness in, in a way that is... I didn't want to be the spokesperson for a certain thing, and so I've lost my voice. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I Ooh, wonder. Could it be? You've created a, a response in your body subconsciously. So... So, but keeping yourself psychologically um, that happy and that's moods and emotions, right? So right. your moods and emotions. That this morning, I was actually I was exercising and I was not completely into it yet, and I just caught myself realizing that I was in a bad mood. I'm not often in a bad mood, but I really was. And um, I asked myself, well, what do I need to do to get out of this mood? Well, I was doing exactly what I needed to at that time. Yes. I find that in my exercise, the physical part of mine, will will drive, that factor will drive my other factors to be on the up and up. So I'm a very active, physically active exercise person. But I also know that very often, it, you know, you don't just go out and start taking a brisk walk and suddenly you feel a lot better. Right. <laughs> it takes me... 
almost exactly 18 minutes before my endorphins start to kick in. Cool. And then I'm in a good mood, and then I'm great for the rest of the day. But So again, your physical, what you're doing physically makes you feel good. Clearly tied to it. Psychologically. Clearly yeah. tied to it. In fact, it almost makes up for, there are factors in my life that I feel are going to be affected with my moods and my emotions, I will try to mask them with the good feelings that I get from the physical activity because it gets me, it's what works for me. It gets me through it. Right. Um, cognitive. How your brain's working. Ooh. So that's the, you know, and we're talking about balance here. So how do you get your brain working? And you, you uh, the other day you told me some, some probably naive story about, <laughs> about again, physically, if you're, <coughs> if you're moving physically. Oh, yes. You're more likely to have... Um, your brain grows. Neurogenesis, yes, yeah. exactly. And they so. have done studies that show that those, those of us that are more physically fit will have healthier brains, which means you're going to have better cognitive capability. That's right. I think food and diet has a lot to do with this as well. So, and the physical is part of the food and diet also, but the cognitive is driven by how well you're getting blood sugar to your brain. You know, right. there's some physical aspects of it, certainly. Um, how well you feel sharp and on top of it. Did you get a great night's sleep? Or are you compromising that? All those factors. Ooh, pay attention to those. Do. And and we understand because we are women, we work, we have kids, we do all of those things. It's not always possible to stay on that balance. But when you are out of balance, you're going to look for those things that are, that are you know, the teeter-totter. Where are you out of balance? And socially. That's do the you fourth. Have, yeah, the fourth one is socially. Do you have a social network that is there to support you when you need it? So if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling down, is there somebody you can call that's going to you know, bring you up and you know that's, that's kind of their job? We talked a bit last month about the... Happiness Advantage oh, by Sean yeah. Acor. Yeah. One of the studies that he cites in that book, The Happiness Advantage, is uh, about those of us that are happier, healthier, and live longer lives. What's the common denominator between amongst those of us that have longer lives? Is it because they lived in a healthy household? Is it because they ate well? Is it because they exercised? None of those. Do you know what it was? They had a support that's network true. that kept them socially tied into others and empathy and emotional around them. So they had this network of other people. That more than so many other factors in our lives is really very critical. There's also a great documentary and it goes into some of this, but it's called yeah. Happy. And um, it just looks at, you know, different different people and, and their happiness factors. You know, you've got a gentleman from... Uh, India, and he's as happy, he's got a great social support network, he's got everything, and he's as happy as any, you know, American living the American dream, because he is supported. Mm -hmm. So that it goes into that, and it's it's a neat little documentary. Well, we'll leave it at those four factors for our so skirt strategists, our social skirt strategists, because I think as women we are naturally social, we love that. Um, the physical area, the psychological area, the cognitive area, and then the fourth being your social area. Check out those factors. If you're a monthly member, you'll also get a one-page PDF for each Monday of this month. You will receive the Monday Morning Detox, but you're welcome to join us with that subscription anytime you would like to hold yourself accountable to follow through on each of these and have us give you an assessment and an assignment and, and keep you in the loop and make sure that it happens for you to be more successful as a high performance woman. And I'm going to take some of our advice and uh, try to get my life in balance. I think you need a hot toddy. I think, oh, and fabulous. Then, I think you should have a hot toddy. I'm going to go make you one right now. Yeah. <laughs> great. <laughs> we'll see you all next month. Have a great one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.